Hi, this is Corbin Coaster some more. This is Corbin and I am at Six Flags over Georgia for the first time ever. And it is pretty cool. But I'm gonna tell you the things that you should avoid when you come so you don't make the same mistakes as me. Or stuff that I found out from the start that maybe you should just know. First thing is I stayed at the Econo Lodge by Six Flags and it is literally a five minute walk to the park. Right here is the opening or the entrance to the park. I am literally closer than the standard parking that's $25 a night. My hotel was before discounts on Priceline, I think it was like 60 for a night. So not much more than parking itself. There's also a little general parking area out there for $20 that's closer than the official Six Flags parking. So I've never seen a park like that. So don't think you have to pay $25 to park. Uh, there's also a couple other hotels like basically on site. So they're not nice hotels. So if you want a nice hotel, nah, you're not gonna get it. But if you're fine with staying in kind of a roadside old school motel, and you can get free parking to the park. So I got a Goliath view from my room. I'm right across from Goliath. One more thing is, if you're not used to buying on Six Flags or Cedar Fair's websites, don't think that the price it tells you is the price you're gonna pay. So it's $35 for the ticket today, which is a great price, plus about $5 in tax, and 10, or I think it was $11.99 in service fees. It ended up being about $50 to get in. Still cheaper than the $75 that you pay at the gate, but, it's kind of scammy. Just go ahead and know it's coming. You're gonna have about $15 of fees on top of your Six Flags ticket. Don't think you're gonna pay what the price says. All right, so I accidentally read that they open at 10. So I got here at about 10.15 thinking I was after opening and they didn't open till 11. However, don't think that that opening time is actually when they open. They just let, started letting people in at exactly 10.30, 30 minutes before open. So I know a lot of the rides may not be open, but it can get you in position for a nice short wait for your first one or to uh, get a snack. They're already opening up the funnel cake stand, which way too early for that, but just kind of interesting. I thought I was gonna have to wait there an extra half hour. Hey, look at this. Before the park even opens, I found the third mistake you might make at Six Flags Over Georgia. If you are by yourself or with a group and don't mind riding separate, they have single rider line for Georgia Scorcher. So I'm assuming that means they have it for multiple rides, which is kind of unlike Six Flags and pretty awesome. I am here solo today. Part of this trip, I am with other people, but today I'm by myself. If you didn't know, I'm on a southeastern theme park trip that's going all the way from Georgia up to Ohio. And of course, I live in Florida, so I have plenty of videos from the Florida parks. Go ahead and check those out here. And don't think free water is easy to find in this park. Uh, clearly, it looks like there was a water fountain here. No longer. And right now, the lines are really long for any of the stands that that would give you free water. Now I made the mistake of not bringing my own cup. They do have a refill station right there that has water on it that I'd be able to use. So it's my fault, but don't make that mistake. And I know this is Six Flags, but what you just saw is the extent of the theming. Like there is literally no theming here. Don't expect any, except on a couple of the rides like uh, the Monster Dark ride, which I'll show you a little bit of. And, uh, course there's like the names of the rides and the signage that's it there's no even attempt at theming here even the wild west area is pretty sad looking 
got some orange paint on the roof. So, just expect amusement park, not theme park. Don't think you're gonna get any launches in this park. There's not a single one. Plenty of variety other than that, though. It's really the only thing they're missing. And they don't have anything that spins. But uh, they've got a family coaster. I mean, a basic one. They've got a kitty coaster. They've got a couple loopers. They've got a suspended coaster. A RMC, of course, and Twisted Cyclone. And a nice B&M Hyper. Well, <laughs> they call it a Hyper. We all know it's not. It's like 185 feet tall. It does feel like a Hyper. Um, though the first first half is a little bit kind of rough rougher than most B&M's but the second half is pretty amazing and actually better than most Hyper's second halves so not so much a mistake here but coming on a weekday is interesting because yeah there's no lines like none everything's been a walk on but pretty much all their flat rides and water rides are closed they also have a water park where they have the wave pool open. When I passed by it earlier, that was all. No slides open, drop towers closed. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing. Don't think you're gonna eat here. That would be a big mistake that I made. Uh, there was nothing right by the hotel and I was walking to the park. So I decided not to drive and get something to eat. So now I'm kind of hungry, but like there's pretzels and popcorn here. There's burgers and hot dogs with a long wait there at the diner. There was a pizza place at the front. Uh, here's a barbecue place, but it's closed, even though it's starting to pick up business-wise in the park. I have seen literally nothing appetizing, except maybe the pretzel, but the pretzels are $8 um, without cheese. So not doing that either. And I'm not even like cheap, you know, I'll pay for a good pretzel. But these are like the stadium pretzels. They're not even like Auntie Anne's or anything. I guess there is a Macho Nachos Burritos. Had it before at another park. Again, eh, at best. And uh, I know it's Six Flags, but like I've been to Six Flags Magic Mountain. They've got wings, vegan, sushi, a little bit of everything. Well, the train's closed too, speaking of closed attractions. It's a lot closed today. And this is a Thursday, by the way. So it is a weekday, but Thursdays are usually a little more open than the rest of the week. And actually, no, that is open, okay. But yeah, a lot of the restaurants are closed. So just kind of interesting to see that a lot of the Six Flags still have not made the upgrades on their food selections. Also, don't think you're gonna have any good drinks here. There is some beer at this Macho Nachos. I also saw one bar, um, and I've been around the whole park. There's been like one bar and one or two places that sell beer cans, and that is it. And even at the bar, there were no like signature drinks that were being offered, or at least not advertised. So, again, food and beverage, that's probably the thing they need to improve on the most at this park. I would not eat or drink here, especially for the prices. I just looked, it was $15 for a couple of tacos. Here's a mistake you might make. Don't forget to ride the Monster Mansion. This is actually a really cool ride. And I think it actually competes on theming with like Splash Mountain and a lot of the Disney rides. It's its own little storyline. Hundreds of animatronics. I, call, I say it's a lot like Splash Mountain without the drop and with a lot scarier monsters. Uh, there's like a cutesy section and then an evil monster section and it's really neat. I'm about to rewrite it so I can show you part of it.
enjoy those little bits of it they told me halfway through the ride on a speaker that I can't have my phone out which I didn't know to be fair at Disney they have similar rides you can film even though they have IP all over them but whatever uh, this is it's gonna be a hot take here but this is better than Pirates of the Caribbean it's better than the Haunted Mansion uh, this is top 20 dark rides for me so and I have Justice League ranked at 19th out of all the dark rides I've been on. So this is the only non-Disney, non-universal park that I've ever been to that has two top 20 dark rides. And along with all the flat rides that are closed, also the family coaster, Joker Funhouse Coaster, and the mine train are closed as well. So a couple credits I don't get. And they both look like they're closed for the day as well as the Log Flume and Rapids. But you know what? That is the risk of coming on a weekday. Hopefully that's just because it's a weekday. Also, this park is small. Don't think it's gonna be an easy walk. There's a lot of these signs and there are a lot of slopes that exceed 12%. Uh, the entrance to this park is pretty much on top of the hill and almost every other part of the park is down or sometimes down and up a hill. I know I was talking about theming earlier. This is what I was talking about. This is apparently the Screampunk district. I don't see anything steampunk, except for if you look way in the distance over here, Pandemonium, which is their frisbee ride is kind of uh, steampunk themed <laughs> but apparently this is a steampunk or scream punk district and there's not a cogwheel anywhere in sight except for pandemonium okay <laughs> and there's river rapids or should be really I mean oh I, I told you the old west town was really bad it's bad. That's it. Oh, that's Steampunk 2. Okay, they call that the Screampunk District. Yeah. Pretty dumb. And I told you there were no waits. I meant it. Any ride that's open, no wait at all. If you were wondering, that other top 20 dark ride is Hall of Justice, the Battle of Metropolis the Justice League dark shooting competition ride that they have at a lot of Six Flags now, but such a good ride. It has physical set, it has video screens, and they've changed it from 3D to 2D, so you no longer wear 3D glasses. And it's very similar to Spider-Man at Universal. Not quite the storyline or high definition graphics, but it's just as fun, really not as good quite that good but it would be I mean it's better than a lot of the rides at Universal are regardless of what people say hey look another closed ride and the last mistake you might make at Six Flags Georgia is thinking there's only one Six Flags water park Six Flags Whitewater is across town and it's actually a really good water park separate admission but they also have a Hurricane Harbor right here in the park included in your admission However, don't expect all the rides to actually be operating 
as with the rest of the park. So overall, is Six Flags Over Georgia the best park? No. Um, and there is one top 20 coaster, barely made it in the top 20. Be sure to watch my next video that comes out, which will be ranking the coasters of Six Flags Georgia. You probably already know which one it is, but only one in the top 20, two in the top 50. Uh, but there's a lot in that kind of yellow middle range. I rank my coasters in like color codes, so like yellow is average. A lot of average coasters here, which is good because a lot of coasters, a lot of parks are. Excuse the interruption. A lot of coasters are, or a lot of parks are top heavy and have a couple really good coasters, and the rest is kind of filler, kind of like Carowinds, which I will also be going to on this trip. Reminder, this is part of a coaster trip, so you can view the whole playlist and uh, see what happens. But yeah, overall, not a bad park. Is it the cleanest park? No. Uh, they're kind of under, very understaffed, I guess, because they're not running half the rides. That park kind of sucks. No lines is great, though, even with it being understaffed. Two top 20 dark rides came as a surprise. I knew about Justice League, and I knew about the Monster Mansion, but... Didn't know it'd be such a cool little ride. So, it's worth a visit. Yes, I don't know if I would make a trip back out here unless they came up with something really new and interesting. It would have to be something new, but they have so much land to play with. And I plan on eventually making a prediction video for this part too of what I think will happen and what I would do if I ran the park. But anyway, from Six Flags Over Georgia, I'm Corbin. Thanks for watching Corbin's Coasters and More.